Hey guys, it's Cal from Lighting Doctor here. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the questions I get asked most often is about voltage drop and how many lights can I fit on my transformer and how should I wire those lights. And uh, if you've watched other videos from YouTube in the past, uh, not ours, but like older videos or or read a bunch of stuff from blogs online and stuff, it usually refers to landscape lighting. Uh, and a lot of that old stuff is talking about incandescent and halogen fixtures, which just use a lot more wattage per light. So that's why voltage drop was such an issue. The beauty of technology getting better and LEDs coming out is now that's less of a concern because you know a typical up light or spotlight like this in the old days would have been um, a 20 or 35 watt halogen bulb in it which means you put five of those on one transformer that's 150 watts so five times 20 is roughly 100 watts and you want to oversize that transformer so you need a transformer that is at least 120 watts or bigger just to run five lights right and the other thing to remember too is that with halogen fixtures if they're not getting the optimum voltage so if it's dropping below 12 volts then they're not going to operate as bright as they should that's why typically if you have a halogen system or an older system you'll have this big massive transformer that's like 600 900 1200 watts it's because that was necessary in order to run those lights with led you don't necessarily need that now because now a typical light like this uh, and you'll hear it referred to a lot as like a 20 watt equivalent halogen lamp is now only about four to four and a half watts of led so now you can fit you know four to five times as many lights on the exact same transformer the exact same line without worrying about as much voltage drop and the other thing is if you're getting a, a good quality light with a good quality bulb the new bulbs are designed to actually run on as low as nine volts of power so they'll generally range from anywhere from nine to ten to fifteen volts and you'll still get near a hundred percent maximum efficiency out of that lamp whereas with a halogen if you weren't getting the proper voltage that light just wouldn't work and that's why voltage drop was so important so if you think of that now um, it brings me to two points is one is why we have our tribe before you buy it offer which I'll explain in a second and two now say you have a transformer that produces 15 volts which uh, a transformer like this that's exactly what this is the the two taps for the wires in here are actually 15 volt taps so they put out a little bit more than 12 volts so that you can afford to lose some of that voltage along the line and still have this light run optimally. And I'll show you guys a chart in a bit that explains voltage drop a little bit better. But for example now, I can, you, I can lose up to six volts of power from this transformer to the farthest light in the field and still have this run at 100% efficiency. That's why voltage drop is not as big a concern when it comes to LED. Now, if you're doing a, a massive system with you know, 40, 60, 80 lights, then there's some things there you might want to consider. But a lot of times I'll even show you guys a couple shortcuts uh, that will help you guys so you don't even have to worry about that. But um, but that brings me to my point why we either decided to do our tribe before you buy it light. Because a lot of people have just only ever seen what's on the, the stores of the big box, uh, or sorry, the shelves of the big box stores with the, the cheap landscape light fixtures and, and they just they don't do the same job or the solar lights which are just not as bright or what we've done is we've taken our standard up light, uh, we've offered it at a discount so you can buy it and you can actually feel it and see what the difference is between quality, but then we've taken it a step further and a little trick that we've learned is with a simple 9 volt battery, which we'll send you, you can take the wires of that fixture because every, wire, every fixture is going to have two wires coming off of it, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second too, but you can just go and hold those wires now to the terminals of your 9 volt battery and you can actually light that light up and then you can go around and you can place it under some trees and see how it's going to look before you go and make any big purchases so that's why we started doing that if you get the light and you try it and you still decide hey i don't want to add any landscape lighting it's just not going to enhance my property at all or it's it's not uh, what i want to spend on something like that right now send it back you get a full refund uh, no harm, no foul. And even if you decide afterwards to go get landscape lighting and buy it through someone else, if all we've done is help you guys enhance your landscape a little bit by adding some proper landscape lighting and not just buying you know, the cheap stuff uh, that I see so much out there and not that solar lighting and all that is bad, there's just there's not a lot of really good options out there right now. And that's something we're working on as well and hope to roll out within the next 18 months. But for right now, it's really good quality, low voltage lights, and that uh, really 
reduce uh, the knowledge that it requires uh, for voltage drop and all that kind of stuff and hub and spoke methods and all that kind of stuff. So I'll get into a little bit more about voltage drop and hopefully answer some more of those questions for you. Hey guys, so here's a uh, voltage drop chart for 12.2 uh, low voltage cable. Uh, and the reason I show you this chart is because 12.2 cable is probably going to be your most common um, your most common landscape lighting wire that you're going to use. Uh, if you're using an LED system, it's going to be very, very, very rare that you're ever going to have to get any bigger than 12 gauge. So uh, it's not often you're going to have to use 10 or 8 gauge. That wasn't always the case when uh, there was halogen fixtures out there because they just required larger wire in order to not lose um, not lose the voltage required to run those lights. Uh, but 12 gauge is going to be your most common and your most typical. So this will be a good starting point. But basically I'll show you why voltage drop is not uh, as big of an issue. As, as you can see here on your left, we have our wattage load. So the way you determine this is you basically add up the number of lights that you have and, uh, and their wattage, and it's going to tell you your total wattage load. So if you have 10 lights that are each five watts, you're going to be, have 50 watts, um, 50 watts on any one line at a time. So let's say you've got 20 lights and they're each um, they're each five watts light. So you have 100 watts of light. Now, as I just explained to you, a good quality, a highly efficient LED bulb is going to run as low as nine volts um, is all it requires to run at almost 100% efficiency. Uh, so again, if you are using a good size transformer that has a 15 volt tap, 15 minus uh, nine equals six, which means you can lose six volts of power along that cable in before you're going to have any issues with that light. So if we look at this, say we're at a hundred Watts and we can only use, we can only lose six, uh, six volts along that line while well, you're looking down here. Now it takes us to run almost 300 feet of cable to lose six volts along that line. If we have tw tw all of 20 lights on that one cable. So 300 feet is is a lot. So if you're concerned about that and you think, oh, I got to run more than that, well, then all you do is, like I'll show you in the next video, is you basically just split that wire into two at the transformer so that now instead of uh, 20 lights, you've got 10 lights on each of those. So now you're only at 50. So you can see now you can run way more than 300 feet out. Um, the chart doesn't even go past that, but you can probably run close to 500 feet off those 10 lights and not have any issues with voltage drop. But this is a, a great chart because it tells you, hey, how many lights do I have? How much wattage am I going to be running? Uh, typically off one transformer, you're not usually running much more than 20 lights. If you are, I'll show you guys some tricks for that. But if you are, you can see here how you can go down, uh, you know, easily 250 feet plus almost 300 feet before you run into that voltage drop of, of uh, six volts that would cause any issues with those lights. So this is a uh, come back to this um, to this chart and to this video here if you guys need any help with that. And I'll show you, uh, you know, even if you get down to 100 and 80 watts, um, you can still run your wire out, you know, 150 feet before you have to worry about uh, about that. And like I said, in the next part of this video, I'll show you guys some tricks on how you can even eliminate this even further. So I hope that helps. Hey guys, so hopefully that gives you a little bit better understanding of how uh, voltage drop works and a really simple way to understand why it's not that much of an issue. But now I'll show you guys a couple shortcuts to even get around that because uh, you know, as you can see from uh, from that chart, I mean, you can easily put 20, 30 lights on a transformer like this and really not have to worry about voltage drop. But if it is something you're concerned about, because say you have an acreage um, or a large property where you have to run a lot of wire, there's really, there's two things that you can do that will almost near eliminate um, the worry of voltage drop. The first is, if you're concerned about it, just go buy another transformer, right? And put them on opposite ends of the property, run half your lights off that transformer, half your lights off that transformer, no issues. Now you know you're gonna have enough. So you can put you know, 25 lights on each transformer, which is 50 lights. That's a lot of lights on a property now, and you don't have to worry about voltage drop. So that's one option. Another option that's even more cost effective now is say you have your, your transformer, okay? And you wanna run, uh, you wanna run your wire out to your lights. Uh, you can run them in sequence, do it whatever is easiest for you. But, so you have your two wires from your 
um, from your two gauge, uh, sorry, not two gauge, but two stranded, 12 gauge wire or 14 gauge or 18 gauge, um, uh, just a general rule of thumb. If you stick with 12 gauge and you're running a system that's, uh, that's got 30 lights or less, 12 gauge is more than large enough. You can get smaller, uh, but the cost difference is not that, uh, it's, it's not that big of a difference just to stick with 12 gauge and then you know you're gonna be covered for voltage drop and stuff. But if you are still worried, and say you have 30 lights and you're like, I just don't know if my transformer is gonna handle it, then what you can do is take your two wires, put one in the common tap and one in the 12 volt tap, and then run that out to one set of lights, so say to 15 lights out there, and then you take another separate wire and you use those same terminals because there's room to fit more than one wire in each of those terminals. You do the same thing, but now you just run this wire out to those lights. So now you've got a wire running out there, You've got a wire running out there. Each of those wires is only now taking 15 lights. So, you know, a fraction, now you're really, you're cutting your wattage in half, which means now you can run even further out there uh, without running into that voltage drop, which I showed you uh, on that chart, really takes um, a lot of wire to run into those, uh, to run into those issues, especially if you're using a larger transformer that has a 15 volt tab. Now you can lose up to those six volts along the line and still have your lights run optimally and that's why when we sell our premium kits and put together uh, larger kits with 20 plus lights we're usually upgrading to a slightly larger transformer like this it's only 150 watts but it has a slightly larger terminal on it so it gives you a little bit more juice so you don't have to worry about that plus um, the terminals on there are just a little bit bigger so now you can fit those two wires uh, going out to both directions of the property or wherever you have to that's going to help eliminate that voltage drop even further so i hope that helps uh you guys just understand voltage drop a little bit better there's a lot more things i can go into we're going to do some more comprehensive videos here over the next couple months um and some real basics about uh how to lay out your lights and all that kind of stuff um the other thing i didn't mention and i get this question a lot too is that you know a lot of people will ask well you have the you know, the two wires, the, the two strands coming off your 12-2 uh, your wire. Now, is there a positive and a negative, and do I have to keep that consistent throughout all the lights? And the answer is no. It's not like stereo wire where there's like a plus and a negative, and you got to keep that flow throughout. It doesn't matter what you put into the common, what you put into um, the 12-volt the tap, and what you hook onto your light, as long as you have your two wires and your two wires from your fixture, and you have one of each of those wires from here 12 to go to each of the wires on the light it doesn't matter if it's the same one throughout all the lights there's no positive or negative it just needs that that consistent circuit to make those lights work so again hopefully that helped i hope you guys take advantage of that uh try it before you buy it off of so many people who have and have really felt the difference between what a quality light should feel like and look like and how it lasts um, and, and has really uh, helped a lot of people make the decision and, and buy the appropriate amount of lights too because they've been able to go and test it out and see what looks good on that property. So take advantage of that. If you guys have more questions or are looking for a little help, more in your design, uh, which is what we find is often the trickier thing until you get a lot of experience. Sometimes you don't know where to place your lights and what kind of lights to use. That's where we can help you. Send me an email at cal at lighting doctor. Dot CA uh, or give us a call at 888-471-0008 and then on how to install it I mean we got a whole series of YouTube videos go and check them out I guarantee you after you watch them you're gonna become a pro and you'll easily be able to do this yourself so thanks again for watching guys we really appreciate your support